and I want to give a very special shout out and welcome to friends of ours, uh, old friends, new friends from all over the country who are a part of our, our online church community. Of course, we have people watching uh, from Kentucky today, and, and, and if you're watching from Kentucky, let us know where you are, what part of the state, uh, Benton, uh, wherever you might be today. Uh, we have people who have been watching from Tennessee, people who've been watching from Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, a special shout out to the folks in Dallas, Texas, who are part of our online church community, and also I reconnected with a very, very dear friend of mine from years ago who was part of our ministry years ago. Uh, he and his wife are living outside the Salt Lake City, Utah area, uh, so today and, and over the, in the weeks leading up to today, uh, they, were, they were with us this past Sunday, and uh, with us today, I trust. Uh, from the great state of Utah. So uh, let us know today where you're watching from. And, and please connect with us. You're going to see a connect link uh, come up on your screen right now. And if you please would, just let us know who you are. Uh, uh, let us know how we can pray for you, your basic information. We would love to include you in all of our church communications. Uh, we just want you to know that you, you, are a part of our church family. And so uh, please go ahead and, and fill out that guest connect link. Let us know who you are. Uh, also, there's ways that you can serve during this time. And here on our church property, and God's blessed us with a beautiful campus here. Uh, and uh, we've been in this facility for almost two years. It'll be two years this fall. So maybe a year and a half. And right now our guys are gathering together and they're taking care of the property. And, and maybe you would like to be a part of our, our grounds team, our mowing team. And today we just said, you know, it'd be great if the Lord gave us 24 guys or, or ladies. It doesn't matter. Girls, guys, whoever. If, if, if the Lord gave us 24 people, uh, then we could have about six teams of four. And that would make it so much easier for people as they come. Uh, we have about 18 acres here. And, and we've got a, a beautiful pond out front the Lord's blessed us with. And so uh, we just want to take care. Even during this time, we want to take care of what God has given to us. So if you, if you want to be a part of that, there is a, a, an I serve link that you can click on. And that will take you to where you can just put your basic information and, and check on how you'd like to serve. If it's grounds, mowing, whichever, fill that out. We'd love to know who you are. And uh, we're just so excited uh, about the opportunities God still gives us to minister and to serve together here. Uh, also, please check out our uh, one of our neat children's resource pages, our FMBC Kids page. Uh, yesterday, Miss Misty Green posted a teaching video for our kids. This is a great resource for families, and it's there all the time. But especially during these times, please be intentional with your family. Be intentional with your kids about making your homes a sanctuary of worship and a sanctuary of praise. You know, this is like our, our home here coming uh, from our home to your home. We're all worshiping together in our homes, wherever we might be. So please be, be very intentional about God-focused and God-centered conversations in your family during this time. Uh, really all the time. But we want to provide some special resources for you. So go to the FMBC Kids page and you'll find there, those there. And uh, we're so glad to, to share those with you guys. So, so we're excited about today and uh, opportunities to worship today. And Cody's got a, another special throwback song and a time of worship. And I'll be honest with you. When I heard the guys, when I heard the guys playing it this morning as I was studying off to the side, uh, just something in my spirit just really just leaped up. And it was like, yes, I'm so glad they're doing that song today. Cody will introduce that in just a second after I pray. Again, so glad you're, you're here. As you check in, say hello. Today, let us know where you're watching from. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and your grace to us. And Father, we thank you for our church family. We thank you, Father, for our online church community that's gathering even now. I pray, God, that your spirit would just fall in a very special way. I pray, God, that you would raise up a spirit of worship in homes, in living rooms, that Jesus would be exalted above all the despair, all the darkness, all the anxiety, all the uncertainty. 
God, we just, we just lift him up, Lord, today. And we're going to see him in his rightful place, already seated at the right hand of God in a, in a position of victory. And so, Lord, since we are in you, that's where we're coming to, where we're coming from today too, Lord, is we are coming to all of this. We're, we're approaching all of this from a platform of victory in Christ. Lord, I pray that you'd give uh, assurance of your love today. And I pray, God, that through this service, uh, you'd give people hope, hope of better days to come. Uh, Lord, we just give it to you. And we trust you to change lives in the time that we have together. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' name and just turn it all over to your spirit. Amen and amen. Well, good morning again, everybody. We're so, so thankful that you've chosen to tune in with us this morning and come worship and learn uh, together as a church body. This morning, we have a throwback that's one of my absolute favorite songs to do in worship with you all, and it's called Here For You. And it's just a quick reminder that Jesus is the reason that we're here, both in this season of life, in whatever position you're in as a parent or a coworker or whatever else it might be as a son or daughter. And most importantly, this morning, it's why you are physically in your homes here for the Lord, worshiping him. And the song talks about how he is the only one who's worthy. There's nothing hidden in this place, wherever you might be, that we're here and we're authentically showing up as sons and daughters in Christ to worship our king. So do that with us this morning worship and sing in your homes and enjoy this time together. We miss you. We want to hear you singing all the way here up at First Missionary. Let's sing together.
Sing with us this morning. Everyone needs compassion, the love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. sing Savior together. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Take me as you find me, all my fears and failures, and fail my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender, I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light. So shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. They were singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Your love, oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. And your righteousness it's like the mighty mountain and your justice flows like the ocean's tide sing it together church i will lift i lift my high voice to worship you my I will find my high strength in the shadow of your wings. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches.
reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. And your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. And your justice flows like the ocean's tide. And I will lift my high voice to worship you, my King. I will find my high strength in the shadow of your wings. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky and you are here moving in stop working never stop you never stop working 
Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Never stop. You never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Good morning. So glad that you're tuning in with us this morning, wherever you are. I was looking earlier, there's folks from all across this United States tuning in with us this morning. We are so honored and so glad that you are with us. God is blessing this ministry in so many ways. You know, I know, folks, that we are living in different times. And I know we don't understand it, probably. But I know one who does. My God understands it. He's not surprised. He knows what tomorrow's going to hold. We don't, but he does. And I pray this morning that your trust is in him and in him alone. Man will let you down, but God will never let you down. So thank you. Thank you, church. Thank you, folks around the country who are supporting our ministry here. We can't do this without you. We can't do this without you, without your support. So all I'm going to say about that this morning is if God is blessing you through this ministry, just support us like you are. And maybe, maybe some of you out there haven't had a chance to do that. We trust and pray that this week God will lay that upon your heart. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for the day. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your unfailing love in uncertain times. Thank you for how you hold our hand and you lead us and you guide us if we allow you to. Father, what an honor it is to be able to just, just to serve you. And just to be able to trust you with the outcome. Father, this morning I pray for folks all across that are watching our live feed today. I know there's hurt. I know there's heartache. I know folks are getting tired. But God, give them rest this morning in you. Give them a, a a renewed spirit this morning. You can do that, Lord. You alone. We're trusting you with that. Be with Alan as he comes in just a moment and brings the message you've laid upon his heart. Father, just thank you so much for how you're blessing in uncertain times. As we just say, you never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. We're trusting you that with this morning, Lord. In your name we pray and ask all these things. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on 
heaven's mercy seen. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, wise and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Well, amen and amen, as best as you can from your living room right now, as we always do here at First Missionary. <laughs> Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise because he is so worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our praise today. I hope that in your homes this morning, wherever you find yourself again, as you say hello to some people, let us know uh, where you're watching from today. But I hope that you've been able just to worship him freely, just to truly turn your living room and in your house into a sanctuary of praise and of thanksgiving to exalt him and to elevate him uh, especially during this very difficult and uncertain time well we've said it and we've said it and we've said it and we're going to keep saying it during difficult and uncertain times people need at least two things. Now we know that there's physical needs and financial needs and, and my goodness right now people are needing some, some mental encouragement. We're, we're watching the news. We're seeing what's happening in a lot of people's lives. It's not real positive with a lot of people right now. They meet, need a lot of mental support. But we just really believe with all of our hearts that it's the spiritual. It is the spiritual that underpins and lays a foundation for everything else in your life. And spiritually, when times are tough, people need to be assured of God's love for them. They also need to know that there is hope. There is hope for better days. And even if those better days don't come in this lifetime, for those who have faith in Christ, those better days will come someday. And this hope comes to us by knowing Jesus. Now, folks, you may not realize it, but it is perhaps even more challenging today in our world and culture than it was last week at this time. I know that people are so over this. They're so over this virus. They're so over being in their homes. People are wanting to get out. And people say, well, you know, what are the numbers looking like? And, and just, just real brief here, from what I last saw in our country, there's over 740,000 cases as of right now or today. Uh, actually, right now, there's over 39,000 deaths that have happened. And people have said, people have said, but you know, when you compare this to other illness or sickness or the flu, then those numbers, there's not much of a comparison or, or they... They roughly compare. But folks, let's remember something very important. During normal circumstances, even when there's your common sickness that's taking place, people still have their jobs. Folks still have their businesses. When someone passes away or someone loses a loved one during those normal times, you can have a gathering of friends and family, a a true life celebration. That's not happening right now. There's, it's very small. It's very private. Also, we need to be reminded that typically when someone becomes ill, they're able to have their family and friends at the hospital around them to, to love them and to support them. And when people are facing their last days on this earth, they're able to have friends and family and their church family to come around them, to hold their hand, to hug them. That's not happening right now. It's a very difficult and uncertain time. 
So we encourage you to please continue to take care of yourself. One another, one another, look out for one another. Continue to let God use your life to be a great light of hope to other people. And let's remember that the hope that we have in Jesus is not just our Easter hope. Jesus is our everyday hope. And so today, with the messages that we're bringing and teaching, we're still, we're still in, that, in that heart and mindset of, of realizing that Jesus is our hope. Up until last week, we celebrated that Jesus is our Easter hope. Well, moving forward, we're going to look and we're going to consider that now because of the resurrection of Jesus. He's not just our Easter hope. He is our everyday hope. And what some people really need to be reminded of today, and maybe you need to be reminded, Jesus Christ, He is a miracle worker. He is a way maker. He is a promise keeper. He is a light in the darkness. Well, today we're going to continue to look at why you can place your faith and trust in Jesus. Why can you do that? Why should you? Why should you place your faith and trust in Jesus? And the answer is simple. Because He is who He said He is. And there were at least two things that verified His claims of who He is as the Son of God, the Savior of the world. At least two things we see. Now, we could talk about Scripture and prophecy. We could talk about the testimony of God's Spirit today. And all of those say, He is who He says He is. But two things really stand out. For one, last week we looked at the resurrection of Jesus. And the other thing that we introduced a couple of weeks ago that we're continuing today is that His miracles, the miracles He performed, testify that He is who He said He is. But not just miracles in general, but some very specific miracles. If you have your scripture with me today, if you have your Bible, please look with me in Matthew's Gospel. We're going to look at another one of those very special miracles of Jesus. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. This is going to be very exciting. Um, wow, there's a lot of neat things that are right here. This begins in Matthew chapter 12, beginning in verse 22. Please read along with me. Then a demon-possessed man who was blind, and your translation might say dumb, we'll talk about that in just a second, was brought to Jesus. And Jesus healed him. He healed him so that the mute man, the dumb man, spoke and saw. Now look at the response of the crowds. All the crowds, the masses of people, were amazed and were saying, this man cannot be the son of David, can he? Surely he's not the king, the Messiah. Surely. Could it be him? Verse 24. But when the Pharisees, the Pharisees were uh, the Jewish religious leaders of the day. The people typically looked to them for guidance and encouragement. And, and however the leadership went, so many times, that's the way the people would ultimately go. The crowd saw one thing, but in verse 24, the Pharisees, when they heard this, they said, this man casts out demons only by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. And knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, and he basically appeals to common logic. And my, my dear friend today, this, this stands for our homes, it stands for our country, our community, our churches. Any kingdom, any kingdom, any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. And any city or house divided against itself, it will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? If by Beelzebul, I cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? 
for this reason they'll be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can anyone enter the strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house? He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me, he scatters. Father, we give this time to you, Lord. We trust that your spirit will be our guide and our teacher. Father, we would not dare begin to do this without leaning and trusting upon you and your power. So, Father, speak into our lives. Speak into our hearts today. Speak into our homes. I pray, God, oh, I pray that you would touch and change lives through our way maker, our miracle worker, our promise keeper, our light in the darkness, Jesus. We lift him up during this time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, when it comes to placing your faith and trust in Jesus, Somebody might ask the question, well, why should I do that? And I really believe that the simple answer is this. Because Jesus is who he said he is. And then you might say, well, how can we know? Is there anything that verifies that he is who he said he is? Well, last week perhaps is the greatest reason, the greatest demonstration as to why you should place your faith and trust in Jesus. His resurrection. His resurrection changed everything. It changed so many lives. The, 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 the followers of Christ who were doubtful and troubled during that week that we call Passion Week. Once Jesus was raised from the dead, from that point on, their lives completely changed. They were courageous. They were brave. Uh, many of them died a martyr's death. Now you tell me. Would anyone in their right mind, and there were many of them after the resurrection of Jesus, would anyone die for a lie? Today, there's over 2 billion followers of Christ. And you ask the question, what was it that made all the difference? It was the resurrection of Jesus. And my dear friend, there is tremendous, there is great historical evidence for the resurrection of Christ that verifies that he is who he said he is and that's good reason for you to place your faith and trust in him today but the other thing that took place throughout Jesus life it has to do with the miracles of Christ and there were basically two categories of miracles one there were general miracles just general miracles and throughout history people empowered by the spirit of God they were able to perform general miracles. However, based on the tradition of the rabbis, the Jewish teachers, leading up to the time and the day of Christ, uh, there would be some miracles that would be very, very special. That not just anyone in, empowered by the Spirit of God, but a very special someone, only a very special someone would be able to perform these miracles. Uh, these were called the Messianic Miracles. Or, or we could also put it this way. These were the miracles that only the Messiah would be able to perform. Uh, the Messiah was the chosen one. He was the anointed one. He was the special one of God who would deliver mankind from his sin and crush the evil one. His name, we believe, is Jesus. There are actually three of these special miracles that are called the Messiah's miracles, the Messianic miracles. And guess what? Since the Jewish leaders knew that this was a part of their tradition, they would be, they should be the first one, the first ones who'd be able to recognize them. Uh, the first one, and we looked at it a couple of weeks ago, had to do with being able to heal a person who had leprosy. Now, there's a very special situation around that that was covered in a message a couple of weeks ago. But we saw a few weeks ago that Jesus, 
Jesus did the unthinkable. He touched a person who had leprosy. And after the completion of the Mosaic Law, there had never been anyone who had been cured of leprosy. But yet Jesus did that. That was one of the Messiah's miracles. And it would lead everybody to say, and it at least should leave ever, lead everyone to say, Aha, here he is, the anointed one of God. Well, that wasn't the only one that Jesus did. There was a second one that we see in today's text. It had to do with healing a, a, a mute demon. Now, you may find that strange and peculiar, and I'll explain that in just a second. But I do want to let you know that the third one that we'll look at next week had to do with, with healing a person who had been born blind. And, and please understand that there are special circumstances around all of these. There's a Jewish understanding and a Jewish layer behind each and every one of these until you know that, that Jewish mindset or those traditions of the rabbis. It's hard to really appreciate these miracles. And that's what we're trying to do for you in this message series, our everyday hope that we're calling it now. But the second one, had to do with healing a mute or a dumb demon. This is what we find in today's text. The scripture tells us that a demon-possessed man who was blind, your translation might say dumb, was brought to Jesus. Now, please understand uh, that in that day and age, in, in that time, whatever was going on in a person's life, if they were under the influence of of a demonic or a dark, dark spirit, then whatever the physical characteristics of the person was, then people believed that those were the same characteristics of that dark spirit or that demon that came over them or possessed them. So in this situation, uh, you have a person who is blind, and some of your translations say dumb. Therefore, they concluded, this must be a blind or a dumb demon. Now, this isn't dumb in the sense of, like, he was not very intelligent. Like, maybe this particular demon, you know, he, he flunked out of Satan Junior High. Or, you know, he, he failed Demonology 101. That's not what is meant here by the word dumb. Some translations say mute. And that is a better translation of this word because it means that this man who was possessed, not only was he blind, but he wasn't able to speak. He wasn't able to speak. Therefore, they believed that this demon wasn't able to speak. Now, why was this so special? It was so special because there was a way that people with the Spirit of God could cast out or exorcise mute or dumb demons. And this was their methodology, the three-step process, if you will. First of all, it began with identify. To identify the demon in the person. It'd be like to be able to, to get communication with that, uh, that particular demon, to communicate. Then once they communicated or they identified the demon who, in the dark spirit, then they would, they, would, they would find out the demon's name. Jesus followed this in Mark chapter 5 with a demon named Legion. If you remember, Jesus asked that demon his name. He said, Legion. The third part of this was that someone would then, by the demon's name, that dark spirit's name, they, by that name, would cast out the demon. Identify, name, cast out. And that was a common Jewish methodology for exercising or casting out demons. Well, guess what? When it comes to a mute demon, you can't communicate. You can't find the name. You can't cast out by the name. So that would require a very, very special power and a very special presence. Well, guess what? The scripture tells us that Jesus casts out this blind and this mute demon out of this man. 
We can imagine what would take place. How the masses and the crowds of people would react. How even the Jewish leadership would react. And there's another place in Mark's gospel that tells us basically that the Jewish leadership, they, based on their investigation, they had already drawn conclusions about Jesus. And guess what? They didn't conclude that Jesus was the Messiah. And people asked the question, well, why not? So so much of it had to do with many of their religious traditions and their ideologies and things that they had gotten away from in regard to the Scriptures and the Mosaic Law. And they were at a place in time where they were not able to see Jesus as the Messiah. And they were making their own choices. Just like you and I today, we make our own choices. Either Jesus was a blasphemer, someone who made ridiculous claims, or Jesus is Messiah. As someone put it once one time, uh, some thought that Jesus was like a, a, a liar or a lunatic. But when you boil it all down, you only have two options with Jesus. He is either who he said he is, or he's not. He's either a lunatic and a, or a liar, or he has to be Lord. People make their own choices about Jesus. Well, the Jewish leadership had, had already concluded that Jesus was a blasphemer. and They, they were rejecting him as Messiah. However, the crowds, the the scripture tells us that the crowds, they were amazed about what Jesus had done. They knew that only a special, special, listen to me, only a special power and only a special presence can come over any spirit of darkness. Especially a spirit of darkness like this one. Scripture tells us, Matthew records, that the crowds, the crowds were amazed by this. They were amazed and they were saying, this, this man, he cannot be the son of God. I'm sorry, the son of David, can he? This man cannot be the son of David, can he? And if he's the son of David, then he would be the king, the promised king, the promised one who is to come. And if he is the king who has been promised and the king is here then you know what that means? It means that God's kingdom is here. And the crowds and the masses of people, they were amazed. It shows that they were being persuaded. And they were drawing their own conclusions. But the Pharisees, the religious Jewish leaders of the day, they had already made up their mind. And and when they heard this, they said, no, 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 no. This, this is not a man who's empowered by God. They said, this man casts out demons only by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. And you're asking who in the world is Beelzebul? Well, first of all, he's identified here as the ruler of the demons. So he would be like the chief of the demons, the chief dark force of all dark forces. Now, I, I'm, an, I'm a, 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 a word nerd at times, and, and I like to study etymology, and I, I like to figure out where words come from. It just happens to be that this term, Beelzebul, is from two Hebrew words. Baal, which means Lord or God, as in a lower coast, lowercase God. And then notice this, and listen to this, Zabul. Zabul. Which means, literally, in the Hebrew, Lord of the flies. Lord of the flies. Based on an old, pagan, ancient, false god. And they believed that the Lord of the flies could come over and cast out and rule over flies. So over a period of time, Beelzebul became known as... The Lord of filth. The Lord of dung. And the Lord of, of nastiness. The Lord of 
crap. This is billsable. And throughout Jewish tradition and history, he would become the ruler of the demons. So here's the deal. In their hearts and minds, they, they could not and they would not conclude that Jesus did what he did by the power of God. Even though he defied methodology of casting out demons. He defied the common way it happened. It was an extraordinary power. But here's what they conclude. They conclude, no, 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 no. Here's what Jesus did. It wasn't by the Spirit of God that he did these things. But look in the text. It says that he did this by the Spirit of Beelzebul. This man cast out demons only by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, he said to them. And this would be almost like us saying, okay, well, let's really think about this. Let's really think about what's being said here. If, if the ruler of the demons is casting out his own demons, then you tell me, what sense does that make? Jesus, knowing their thoughts, he said to them, any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. You and I both know that, that any kingdom that wants to stand, any nation, country, it has to be united. United we stand, divided we what? Divided we fall. Jesus takes it further. He says, in any city, any city that's divided against itself, it will not be able to stand. And then he brings it home even more closely. Any house divided against itself, it will not stand. This is a guiding principle of all of life. This is common logic. It's common understanding. If there is division in your home, in your relationships, in your lives. If there's division, it's going to be really hard to stand. Not just in your homes, but in any city, any nation, any kingdom. Cannot stand. So then Jesus does this. He takes it to the next part. In verse 26, he says, So, if Satan casts out Satan, he is what? He's divided against himself. Now you tell me, how then will his kingdom stand? And the answer is clearly, it would not be able to stand. So what Jesus is doing is he's taking their argument. And in his wisdom that comes from God, he turns this back to them. And then as he begins to close out this teaching, notice what happens next. He says, if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided. How in the world can his kingdom stand? In verse 27, if Beelzebul, the Lord of the flies, cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? By whom do your sons cast them out? So if Beelzebul cast out demons and you're casting out demons, then you tell me by what power are you doing it? Something like Jesus is saying, you're doing the same thing. And none of you would ever admit to that. For this reason, they'll be your judges. But, and listen to what he says as he closes out this teaching. But, 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 but. If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, if I am who I say I am, then you need to be aware of something really, 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 really important. If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, if I am who I say I am, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. And my dear friend, I want you to think about this. What did Jesus do? He spent his life dispelling darkness. 
when there was a sickness, He overcame it. When there was a tragedy, He triumphed over it. He lived His days in His life. Seeking out the good and the light of people. He took up for the underdog. He stood by the side of those that society had outcasted and had rejected. Jesus spent His life dispelling the darkness around people. And here's what I want you to know. Today, Jesus does the same thing. He spends His resurrected life coming into our lives, into our world, and He is speaking to the evil. But many times, just like when He raised Lazarus from the dead, He weeps with people. He cries with people. He feels their pain. He walks with people. He understands that a broken world is going to render things broken. That in a broken world, there's going to be all kinds of brokenness. And He walks with people to give them hope of a better day. This is what Jesus spent His days doing. Casting out, dispelling darkness. And then He says this. If I cast out, if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, you need to know the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can anyone enter the, the strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house? In other words, it's going to take someone, it has taken someone who is greater than the strong man to overcome the strong man. And Jesus is saying, that's what I've been doing. The evil one, the spirit of darkness, uh, this hopelessness, it is strong. It is powerful. But I'm the stronger man. And it takes a stronger man to overcome the strong man. You know, in my house right now, if you drive by my house on any given afternoon, the garage door is likely to be up and open. And my garage has been converted into a home gym. At any point in time, you're lock, likely to walk out there and see three or four teenage boys out there working out in my garage. In fact, my son Brady, he's become the personal trainer. He's the appointed personal trainer of the entire family. He's got his mama out there. He's got his sister out there. He's had his dad out there. I was up there lifting weights the other day, and Brady looked at me. He said, Dad, you're losing it, buddy. You're losing it. I'm like, thanks, son, for the reminder. I hadn't done this in a long time. Why is that? It's to be stronger. Because everybody wants to be stronger tomorrow than they were today. Because when you're strong, it gives you hope of better days. Jesus said it takes a stronger man to cast out the strong man. Therefore, last thought. Jesus said, He who is not with me. He is against me. And he who does not gather. With me. He scatters. So a very simple question. As we leave you today is this. Are you with him? Or not? He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He's a light in the darkness. And you can, you can, you can throw those up in, in all different kinds of arrangements. He's a light in the darkness. And then he's a promise keeper. And then he's a way maker. No, he's a miracle worker first. No, he's a, he's a, he's a light in the darkness first. No, he's a miracle worker. First. No, 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 no. He's a way maker. No, he's all of these things. And to be with him is to be with the one who gathers hope. And the picture here of gathering hope is that you take all of who He is into your life and with Him you gather hope. To gather hope means that you strengthen it. It's like piling weights on the weight bench. You're strengthening 
But either you are a hope gatherer with Christ or you are a hope scatterer against Christ. To scatter means to weaken. It means to weaken. It means to to make thin and to dissipate. Jesus was just turning this back around after he had performed the second messianic miracle. And he was saying, I am who I say I am. The kingdom of God has come. Yes, I am the king. Now make your choice. Make your choice. Do you want your house healed? Do you want broken relationships mended? Do you want to see people have hope in their last days? Do you, do you want to see people when, when they feel like their business is failing, they're going to lose everything, instead of them having suicidal thoughts and ideologies, do you want them to have hope in their lives? Then let God use your life as a hope gatherer with Christ. Do not let thoughts of negativity, thoughts of despair, fill your hearts and fill your minds. Do not, do not loosen your grip on Christ. And if you've never laid hold of Him, laid hold, lay hold of Him now in your life. He is who He said He is. You can place your faith and trust in Him. And now, if you know Him, hold Him even tighter. Be a hope gatherer. Don't be a hope scatterer. In Jesus' name. Our prayer counselors are standing by right now. If you need somebody to pray with you, to lift you up, you got a burden on your heart you want to share, we're inviting you to do that even now. Cody's going he's gonna to lead us in a time of response. Bow your heads with us, please. And just respond to the Lord in your life today. And if you're making any decision for Him, if there's anything in your life, your heart, you want to throw out, put out there right now, let us know what it is. Let us be a part of this journey of, of discovering Christ with you. And then Cody's going to pray us out. God bless you for being here with us today. He is a way maker. He is a promise keeper. He is your light in your darkness. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Cody, lead us out. You give light. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out Pour out our praise into your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Father, you're so worthy this morning of all praise. We know that you were doing something very special during this season. That so much confusion and frustration. But God, you work all things together for the good of those that love you. And we believe that. We thank you for what's happened this morning. We thank you that you go with us, Father. That though our time together that may be over this morning, church certainly isn't over. And we're grateful for that, Father. Thank you that you're everything we need through the week, for the day, for this season. We trust you in all things. It's in Jesus' name we pray this morning. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for joining us today.